Jeffrey Lee Bates, and our way to a wonderful life message for today is titled, Question Everything, Question Everything. And this age of 24-hour cable television news, smartphones and iPads and tablets, etc., there is little wonder that some people have time to think at all, let alone question what they are listening to. You see a great deal of evidence of this on CNN and MSNBC and Fox News channels because most of what they broadcast is opinion, not news. Unless, of course, we stretch the definition of news to include opinion. But the issue that arises with this is that most of the opinions are from people who are biased in their thinking and have given little time to question the results of their thoughts. As anyone who has watched the debates between the candidates seeking the nomination of their particular parties for president, it is clearly obvious that most of those debating have never truly given any deep thought to what they believe and why they say the things that they say. If they did, they would be more consistent and firm in their position. Most appear to have little conviction in their statements, and sometimes this applies to those who are listening to them too. Now, so many people get caught up in single-mindedness in their, their faith and their belief that they put blinders on. So they don't open their mind to the new. They don't open their mind to the greater revelation of truth that God is seeking to bring forth into each and every one of us as consciousness. And that's why Jesus was always telling the people to let your mind be free of the noise and nonsense of the world. That's why they go into the closet to shut out the noise and the nonsense, that closet being, go into the silence of your mind and let God in. Let that, that still, small voice that will thunder through your intuitive mind, the right ideas for you, the right truth for you, the right knowledge and awareness for you, let that in. Otherwise, you just keep doing the same old things over and over and over again. And sometimes expecting a different result. And that's kind of crazy. Now, the scientific genius Albert Einstein had this to say about questions. He said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, if I had an hour to solve a problem, and my life depended on the solution. Now, this is the urgency. He said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, and my life depended on this solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask for once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. It's not amazing. Let's look at that again. This is Albert Einstein. He said, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. That's from Albert Einstein. Now, Einstein tells us to never stop questioning, and this instruction is no different than the mastermind Jesus' instruction to seek and ye shall find. He didn't say seek, seek today or seek for a moment. He said seek always, seek. Continue to question. Never stop questioning. Never stop seeking. For the infinite spirit intelligence has ordered the universe in such a way as to be responsive in filling the void in all things. Therefore, for every question, there is an answer. But as the great Einstein tells us, we must determine the proper question. We must determine the proper question. Now, it takes thought and contemplation to determine the proper question. And the question must be in the form that causes the response, causes the response to be a definite answer or solution. Now, the spiritual teachings of metaphysics has given many of us the knowledge of the law of attraction and the law of correspondence, but the value of these immutable, changeless laws escapes so many of those who have become aware of them. I have had so many people tell me that they know they are responsible for their lack of money, their lack of success, their lack of health, and their lack of enthusiasm for life. And this is only a partial truth. Actually, it is such a small fragment of the truth that we could make the comparison, as the mastermind Jesus did, to a grain of mustard seed in regards to faith. To believe this is to believe that our human nature is our dominant nature. But this is not true. 
We are of the nature of our Creator. We are of the nature of intelligence and power and spirit. It is not our true self that attracts to us poverty and indebtedness, illness, unhappiness, or seeming failures. If these conditions are what we are living through, it is because we have allowed ourselves to believe that our human nature is our dominant nature, and therefore we have lost touch with the truth about us. We have created an illusion of separation where there is none. We have created an illusion of separation where there is none. So let's go back and look at those words again from the great Albert Einstein. If I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask, for once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. So why does he say that? Because if we put our energy and our focus and mind on the proper question, the answer will come to us. For God, infinite spirit, infinite intelligence, has created a universe that responds to us by corresponding to that which we take into our mind is true for us. So if we have that proper question, that proper question is going to be something that elevates our consciousness to a greater level of awareness so that we can realize the solution or the answer that we're seeking. So in these words from Albert Einstein, we find why most people do not realize the solutions, the ideas, or the answers that they need to experience the greater thing that they desire or dream about. It's not that I'm so smart, he tells us, but I stay with the questions much longer. It's not that I'm so smart, he tells us, but I stay with the questions much longer. And this is why so many of us fail to find solutions. We stop with the questions and fall back onto the problems in our thoughts. Einstein tells us, never lose a holy curiosity. Never lose a holy curiosity. Curiosity must be aroused within us, and we can all do it. We can all do it. We just must want to know why we believe what we believe, not why we attract struggles in our life, not why we let in illness and dis-ease. We must have a curiosity that is on fire with the desire to obtain the answers to our questions, and we must be willing to be so persistent in staying with the questions that nothing or no one can convince us to give it up, to give it up. It's up to us. It's up to each and every one of us to, to realize in our mind what it is that we want, what it is that we, that we desire. Let's just look at these words from the mystical Ernest Holmes and think about Think about this as the reality of you is in right, right here, right now, right in this moment. The spirit within you is alive and awake and aware. It is always flowing through you in perfect life. So accept your spiritual perfection. Know that your physical being is included in this spiritual perfection, that it is a manifestation of life, the one life which is God, the energy, the power of God, the love which is the spirit of God the peace and the power which is of the Spirit of God. Know that this day in which you live, this present time which is now, can be perfect. For he perfects all things which concerns us. Everything in our world works harmoniously and divinely when we recognize that God, God is at work in our life. That's why Jesus said, it is the Father that doeth the work. Jesus said, don't call me good. Only the Father is good. And the Father, he said, is spirit. Not a spirit, but spirit. Omnipresent, everywhere present. Omnipotent, all power. Omniscient, all intelligence. All intelligence. So let's know that we can live in the completeness of this, this present moment. And let's know that the all wisdom of God will guide us and the all power of God will protect us. And that the all presence of God goes with us no matter where we may be. And let's begin to accept all that we have hoped for and believed in. And let's tell ourselves there's nothing in us, there's nothing in me and you that can doubt that goodwill make its appearance in our experience. 
There is nothing in us that can dissipate our faith and dim its clear realization as long as we hold true to the truth that all is God and all is good. All is God and all is good. Not, not the God of traditional religion, not the big guy in the sky God, not the God that's a chess player. So many people think God is a chess player, that God will move people around to do whatever it is that people want them to do. But we have no control over anyone or anything outside of our own consciousness, our own experiences of life as, as we think them to be in our mind. If we think we're a failure, then we're going to get the failures. If we think we're, we're subject to disease, then we're going to have the disease and the illness. If we think we're subject to poverty, we're going to see poverty show up somewhere in our life. But we have to find our way through to that greater thing. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you, not low here or low there. But how do we get to that kingdom? And Albert Einstein is telling us we get to that kingdom, that realization of the right solutions, that realization of the right answers, that realization to the right guidance and direction by asking the proper question. What is the question? If I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could, serve the, serve, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes, in less than five minutes. Now, he's not telling us that he can do something that we can't do. He said, it's not that I'm so smart. He said, but I stay with the questions much longer. I stay with the questions much longer. And he has faith that our mind is connected to that greater mind, that greater intelligence, which is God. That greater intelligence that already knows all the answers to everything. That already knows that we must lift our awareness to, towards solutions. We must lift our awareness and find the mental equivalent of what it is that we desire to experience. If we want to have greater wealth, we must see ourselves as wealthy. We must get a sense of being wealthy. We must ask the right question to realize that wealth, to ask the proper question. The questions aren't why we attract struggles in our life or why we are ill or why we are feeling a dis-ease in our life. The proper question is to draw into our mentality that greater something, that greater idea, that greater guidance, that greater solution that will bring forth our good. We must have a curiosity that is on fire with the desire to obtain the answers to our questions. And we must be willing to be so persistent and staying with the questions that nothing or no one can convince us to give up. And that's why Einstein says, it's not that I'm so smart, but I stay with the questions much longer. And he tells us to never lose a holy curiosity. Never lose a holy curiosity. He calls curiosity holy. Why? Because it's the wholeness of, of God, the wholeness of happiness and joy and peace and harmony that we all see. It's the wholeness of health. We don't want to heal our hand if our hand is infirm and then struggle with a foot that's infirm. We want the wholeness of health. We want the wholeness of prosperity. We don't want to pay one debt and then have something else come to us that we don't have the money to pay. We want to have the wholeness, which is the holiness of the spirit moving through our mind, our heart, and our soul, the wholeness of the spirit, bringing forth the right ideas that prosper us, heal us, and bless us, bringing forth the wholeness of the spirit and all of its intelligence and power necessary for us to know and know that we know that our good is guaranteed, that our good is available to us, that each and every one of us have within us that right thing. Dr. Frank Christian tells us that if you are coming into a new awareness, you know that the transformation brings within it the solution to your problem. 
You can consider the problem solved. Say it solved. Say it. The problem is solved. I have the answer. Illness is diminishing and health is becoming manifest. Lack is finished and the flow of abundance is coming into your living experience. Jesus was telling us that we must be born again. Why did he say that? Because we've come into the world and we have allowed ourselves to believe all the things that the world believes, all the things that have brought poverty and illness and war and friction and struggles into life. So to be born again means that we are to truly manifest in our consciousness that we are in the world but not of the world. And so we look beyond, we look beyond the things of the world and we look to that formless, in, invisible substance of God to bring forth and attract into our lives all the things that we are desiring to experience. The life we are experiencing today may not consist of more than a blink of an eye when compared to the eternality of our soul or to the infinite. Yet many people seem to think that everything is measured in this one measurable lifespan, which is never the truth. We are a spirit having an eternal life experience. Eternity doesn't begin when we move on to the hereafter. We are already in eternity. Our spirit is part of God. God is eternal, changeless, immutable. The spirit of God is the the truth of each and every one of us that we are here expressing the spirit of God and the nature of God that God has created us in its very own nature intelligence and power and a knowingness that there's something greater so it's up to us to learn how to ask the proper question and the proper questions with the foundation of what is it that I love can open up an awareness of our mind that may surprise and excite each and every one of us every day. Because no matter what it is that we're dealing with today, we're going to deal with something tomorrow as long as our feet are, are planted on planet Earth. And as long as we're in the world, we're going to find something, something that we're going to go through. Remember, nothing... We have no control over anything in the world around us except our reactions to those things in the world around us. And so we begin with the proper question. What is the next step for me to realize greater prosperity? What is the next step for me to find the solution to bring forth perfect health, to bring forth that which is necessary for me to realize a greater wholeness of life. What is that within me that can bring forth into my consciousness the right ideas, the right guidance, and the right direction from infinite intelligence, from infinite intelligence, not, not just the intelligence of the world, but that infinite intelligence of the spirit that remains invisible but brings forth the invisible into the visible through our consciousness because what God is going to do for us God is going to do through us, and, why that, and that is why that proper question is so important. And if we don't know the proper question, ask, what is the proper question? What is the proper, proper question that I should be asking? What is the proper question that I should put into form and words? What is the sense of that proper question that I'm seeking to realize in my life? Never lose a holy curiosity. Never lose a holy curiosity. Can you imagine what would have happened if Jesus had listened to the people of the world? What would have happened if Jesus had listened to the religious leaders of his time? What would have happened if he had listened to the government agencies of his time? What would have happened? We probably wouldn't even know who he was. He said, be in the world, but not of the world. Be in the world, but not of the world. Don't let the world diminish the truth of you. Don't let the world take away the truth that your mind is connected to that one mind, that one intelligence, that one spirit, that one power, 
which is God. That the very life of us is God. When Jesus said, it is the Father that doeth the work, he meant it is the Father that doeth the work in all things. It is the intelligence of God. The loving, powerful intelligence of God that beats our heart, that opened our eyes this morning, that caused us to inhale and exhale, that caused this intelligence that works through our body, this principle of health to keep us healthy and alive, this principle of abundance to, to give us the awareness that there's a great abundance in the world and there's no reason to believe in lack, but there's every reason to believe that if we ask the proper question, we will draw into our lives that greater experience, that greater prosperity, that greater health, that greater happiness, that greater joy, that greater love, that greater opportunity to have a greater enthusiasm for life. And so it is.